of the uh, sales and marketing of Drill Point, working with Abila as well as your partners in terms of uh, responding to information needs. And uh, as Robbie mentioned, we are recording the webcast today, so uh, there will be a uh, survey that will pop up after the uh, webcast. And in that survey, you'll have an opportunity to request a copy of the recorded demo from today. So if you respond to that survey letting us know you want a copy, then we will get that to you uh, after the conclusion of today's demonstration. So to give you some brief background on Drill Point, the product itself has been around since 2009 when it was first released. As of uh, March of 2015, um, the Abila uh, company has uh, partnered with Drill Point to make Drill Point a OEM product. And that means for you, practically speaking, your support for Drill Point comes through Abella. So that same 800 line support that you're calling for MIP support, you would do the exact same thing to get assistance on Drill Point. It is also sold exclusively through Abella or your partner. Um, and it is considered a module within the MIP family of modules. Today we have about 350 customers on the product. Uh, primary benefits that, that we're seeing for our clients include the ability to deliver information from your MIP accounting system in an easily consumable format, that being Excel, so folks are not as intimidated by the medium of Excel as opposed to looking at raw accounting reports. Um, we are finding that folks are, are able to get their management more engaged by giving them information in an Excel format. And because it is interactive now, your managers can also drill into these reports back to source details so they can start answering their own questions as opposed to you being kind of the source for all answers. Uh, reports uh, are also now uh, refreshed and delivered in minutes. So these reports, once built, live in Excel, as Robbie's going to show you. And when you develop a report and provide it to one of your viewer managers, they can save it as an Excel spreadsheet and refresh it uh, by simply pressing a button in that saved workbook. The data is automatically going to refresh to that format without overriding uh, the report that you've built. Uh, these reports now are available, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in minutes. And you're able to produce reporting that is not necessarily readily available in the base MIP reporting. And Robbie's really going to touch on those areas today. Uh, a lot of the things that you're having to do right now in Excel can be accommodated through standard drill point reports. Um, the final note I'll make, and it's a, it's a very strong point, is that this is not a product that has to be a technical uh, staff member uh, to use. It allows you to build these reports using concepts that are similar to what you already are familiar with in MIP. And because we're using the Excel framework for the report building, most folks are very familiar with Excel. So combining that knowledge of Excel along with your knowledge of the base MIP reporting, um, you really can be a very strong user quickly with Drill Point. It also is going to install very quickly. So uh, in about the space of 15 to 20 minutes, uh, you're able to install this product. Uh, it automatically attaches to the MIP database, so you don't have to build a data library and do table joins and everything before you can start using the product. As soon as it's installed, it's basically ready to use. It, it does, as I mentioned earlier, live in Excel. Uh, so once installed, you'll look in your Excel and you'll see a tab now for Drill Point. Uh, there are two types of drill point user licenses. Both types are named, meaning that unlike the concurrent main users in MIP, with drill point you receive with the multi-user package two designers and five viewers, meaning that you can assign two designer login and passwords and five viewer login and passwords. But unlike the concurrent uh, model, you can't go out and assign more than those logins, even though only five people can get in at the same time. It is only allowing you to assign five logins and five passwords with the multi-user viewer licensing. Now, of course, you can add designers and viewers at will, um, 
but it is a named uh, structure to these user licenses. Um, reporting controls uh, can be uh, done at the account segment level. If you have the ABILA advanced security module, those security rights in ABILA are going to pass through to the drill point security rights. Drill point users do not impact your MIP licenses. So even though you may be designing a report, refreshing a report, drilling into a report in drill point, you are not taking away one of your MIP licenses to do that. It's totally a separate and distinct user right that does not impact your MIP main licenses. It works with both the MIP advanced product as well as the MIP on-premise version. So either version that you have, uh, this product will work with it. And it is available, as I mentioned earlier, in a multi-user package with two designers and five viewers. Or if you want to start off with a smaller package, you can get a single designer and single viewer package and then upgrade at some point in the future to the multi-user package. And at the multi-user level, then, you can add individual designers and viewers at will. So at the conclusion of the demo today, uh, again, you're going to get that survey. You're going to have the opportunity to request more information, whether that's around the pricing of the product, additional product questions, or wanting more information about training. What we'll do then is pass those questions along to either your MIP business partner or to your Abila customer account manager so that they can follow up with you and provide you that information. So with that being said, um, Robbie, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you for the demonstration. Great. OK, thanks, Bob. <clears throat> so let me get switched over here. All right, so now we're going to jump right in. A couple things, too, I just want to reiterate uh, that Bob mentioned. Um, drill point is actually written as a Microsoft Excel add-in. So from a technical point of view, what that means is that once you get drill point installed on your system, the next time you go into your copy of Microsoft Excel, at the top of the screen, you're going to have this new menu item that says drill point. And then underneath the drill point menu bar, depending upon the type of user that you are, either a designer or a viewer, you're going to have different icon options up at the top of the screen, right? So I'm logged in as a designer and as an administrator, so I've got full access to all of the functions within drill point. If I were not a designer but a viewer, you know, someone like an executive director or maybe a department head, program manager, grant manager. And all I was doing is opening up this report and running or refreshing the report. I wouldn't have the ability to see these maintenance items up here at the top of the screen. They would be hidden for me because I'm not able to actually impact the layout of the report itself. Okay. So what we're looking at here within DrillPoint is, um, is just a basic revenue and expense report template that I've created and I've designed. Okay, so you'll notice that I designed this right within Excel. And what I was able to do, because we're using Excel as the reporting tool, what I'm able to do is to add really any type of Excel features functionality to this report. Okay, so in addition to it being a, a very advanced report writing tool, um, as we'll see when we get into uh, some of the design components, but you also have the ability really to apply you know, charts, graphs, formats, boxes, colors, and that type of thing that you're probably now doing after the fact. Um, without drill point, what you're having to do is if you're working within Excel, right, is you're running your reports within MIP, then you're exporting that information out. After you export it out, then you're spending time manipulating that data and applying your various formattings to that. But that's a repetitive process, right, that you're doing time after time after time. So here within drill point, we can simply design the report with the look and feel that we want. And then from that point forward, we're just running and refreshing the report. So it really streamlines that process and gives you a really nice looking 
presentation ready type reports um, right out of a box. Okay, so one of the things that Bob mentioned about this being a non-technical product, the other things that I'll mention as well is because it's specifically integrated with your MIT system, after it gets installed, DrillPoint knows everything about your MIT setup, right? So it knows what your chart of accounts segments are. It knows what all the values of, of all of those are. It also knows things like closing account assignments so that when you're crossing from one fiscal year to the next, uh, DrillPoint's going to do that closeout for you as well. So it knows how to close out your fund balances and really any other balancing segment that you might have within your chart. DrillPoint's going to handle that very nicely for you. Um, it also knows when your general ledger fiscal year start and end dates are so that it knows what your relative fiscal periods are and and again as Bob mentioned the security that's built in as well if you're using the advanced security module here those same security settings are applied to these various reports in drill point so you know if you've got someone maybe that manages a specific grant and that's the only thing that you want them to be able to see then when they come in and log the report and run the report after logging in the report will be restricted for only that information that they've been granted access to. Okay, so again, very integrated, but but yet very easy to set up and use. So if we take a look at this report in design mode, you can see I've got a revenue section that I've created here at the top, and down at the bottom I've created my, my normal expense section. And then within within each kind of main section, I've got these subcategories. So I've grouped my revenues into three types and my expenses into four types. So then if you kind of look across the report page at, in, in, in terms of the columns here, what I'm going to get here is some actual information in these first two columns with a variance. And then I'm going to get my budget numbers in a column with a couple more variance columns. Okay. So what you can see here is if I highlight one of these cells, this is nothing more than just an Excel formula. Okay. So if you're used to using Excel, then um, you'll be able to, to work very easily here within, within DrillPoint. Now, one thing I want to point out here, if you look in column B and C, I'm going to highlight those two columns. This is actually going to print the account number and then the account description when I run the report. But you might notice that up in the revenue section, it actually shows GL. But down in the expense section, it shows program. What this is is when you're creating and designing the report, one of the nice things about Drill Point is when you're creating that layout, you can tell the report for each section of the report which segment of your chart do you want to use as group as the grouping for that section. Now, this report is only using a single segment for grouping. But you can actually combine segments and create what we would kind of commonly refer to as a linear account number. So you can take really any of the segments of your chart of accounts, put those together in more of an, a linear account fashion. So an example might be up here in the grant revenue section, maybe not only do I want to group that by GL account, but maybe I also want to group that by a combination of grant and GL account, and then see those combinations reported together on a, on a, a single line. Okay, So you have that flexibility to do that. And I'll show you where that gets done when we actually jump over into the design part of the report. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to take on the role of a viewer. So if I were a viewer, I'm logging in and I'm ready to run my um, revenue and expense report. So what I'm going to do at the top, I'm going to click Report Refresh. And when I click Report Refresh, you can see that it pops up this window for me. So this window really are additional options that I can set at runtime. So when I'm running this report, Probably I'm going to change the effective date depending upon the time period that I want, want this report to be reflected as of. Okay? And then I also can do some other formatting things here as well as I can do additional um, filtering down here at the bottom. Right? So 
as you can see right now, this report, the default is set to filter for a series of programs. As long as they fall within this range, then they're going to get included on this report. Now, also keep in mind, if I'm using advanced security, even if the user tried to select a program here that they're not authorized to view, the report would still exclude that information from the report. So there's no way to bypass that, that security. Okay. And the designer really has control over which options the end user, when they're running and refreshing the report, can actually change at runtime. Okay. So all of that, again, is controlled through the design features and, and functions of drill point. I want to point out this effective date that I'm showing up here at the top of the report. As you can see, uh, that date can be changed, right? So every time you refresh the report, to get a different time period on the report, you simply just change the effective date. Now, the reason we have this effective date is because when you're adding columns to these reports within DrillPoint, each column has the capability of having its own unique time period or time frame. So rather than being kind of limited in your reporting now where the report kind of has a start date and an end date, everything on the report falls within those parameters, DrillPoint's going to allow you to really specify a specific time period for each column. So, so what does that allow us to do? Well, that then allows us to have columns on our reports that might be historical in nature, right? So maybe we want to do something like, all right, I want a column on my report that when I run the report, it's going to look at the effective date that I've given it. It's going to go back and give me a cumulative total for the prior five years. And then I'm going to have a column that actually does a formula on that number that maybe divides that by five. And what's that going to give me? That's going to give me my five-year average, right? So maybe I'm going to show that five-year average in one column. And then in the next column over, I'm going to show the current period. And then I'm going to do a variance column, which is going to show me where we are in the current year versus where we've been historically on average for the prior five years. Okay? So again, that's just one of the, one of the pieces of flexibility that you're going to see here within drill point. So let's go ahead and, and run and refresh the report. So I'm going to click refresh. So when I click refresh, now what's happening here is that the first thing that the report's going to do is it, it's going to go out to my MIP database. It's going to grab all of the information that I've requested for this report through the design mode Okay, as a designer. Once it does that, then it's going to bring those transactions back to the report for me. And then that last step that it's working on is going to be the actual preparing and the formatting of the report. Okay, So it's going to apply my bolds, my highlights, my underlines. And it's also going to update any formulas that I might have built within this specific report. Okay, so it's uh, it's wrapping up at this point. And Bob, it looks like we have maybe a question that someone's entered. So while this is finishing up, let's go ahead and take take a question. All right. So the question is: Does Drill Point access payroll or HR module tables? All right. So. The answer to that directly is no. This is just strictly a general ledger report writer, um, financial report writer. However, what, what we'll see here in the actual drill down is that you can drill down into those sub-ledgers to see specific information like journal entries and invoices and things of that nature. Um, but it, it does not have a direct interface to like your payroll tables where you can say, hey, list these 30 employees with you know, their earnings and thing, things of that nature. Okay? So we're focusing um, just specifically on the financial side of re the reporting. Any other questions at this point, Bob? No other questions. All right. So now we have a report here that's been completed. So now once we refresh the report, you can see it actually put information in here for us. 
So if we look at the report, you can see we've got a couple actual columns, and it looks like this was my prior year, prior period. This was my current period, and then my variance. And then the same thing with the budget. This is my budget for the current year, along with a variance. Okay. So now let's scroll down here to the expense section of the report, and let's take a look at the drill down capabilities. So I'm going to drill into this number right here on the report, which is 9721.21. So when I clicked on that, it takes me down to the first level of detail. So what we're looking at here now is the general ledger detail. Okay, so we can see every transaction that actually made up that amount within that cell in the report. Okay, so there's our total amount. These are all of the transactions. Now, I can sort and summarize any column here within the drill down. So for example, maybe what I want to do is group and sort and summarize by session ID. Okay, so you see what it did? It was it grouped everything by session ID, and now it's given me a subtotal for each session ID in the drill down. So I can scroll all the way down the report. Okay. Now, the other thing that I can do here is, again, I mentioned I can do that on any column within the report, but I also can do that as with a combination of my chart of account segments as well. So let's say, for example, I want to see this information drilled down, summarized at the fund and grant level. So I'll click Summarize Segments. I'll choose Fund and Grant. I'll say Sort and Summarize. So now look what it did. Now it gives me groups everything with that combination of fund and grant, and then gives me a subtotal for each combination of fund and grant that's in the drill down. Okay. Now, in addition to that, <clears throat> that's just the first level of drill down. That's the general ledger detail. But I actually can go deeper than that. So let's take a look at this accounts payable invoice. There's the invoice number. So let's click on that. And now we're <clears throat> able to actually drill down and see all of the um, related information for that. So on this first tab, this is all of the AP stuff, right? Vendor, vendor address, and the, the distribution here on the expense side of where, where um, when we enter this invoice where everything was paid. Okay. We also have the ability to come to this payments tab and get a status of this invoice. This is showing that the invoice was paid, and it actually shows the check number that paid it. And we can see that we've cleared this check through our reconciliation process on this date. If we're interested in the cash allocation, we can click on the check number, and it will pop up the, the check cash allocation for us. So we can see here when we ran this through accounts payable, how the AP was relieved down here at the bottom, and then the cash account was impacted here. So we can see all of that information as well. On this next tab, which is our purchasing tab, if you're using purchase orders, encumbrances, or requisitions, that information is linked here as well through drill down. So we can see that there was a PO attached to that invoice. So we can drill to the purchase order. Over on the items tab, we can quickly see that there was a requisition where the two items came from for this purchase order. We can click on the requisition number and drill into that and see all of the, the information as it relates to that specific purchase order as well. Okay. And then the attachments tab, if you're using the MIP attachments, those are viewable here within drill point. And if you've got any uh, user-defined fields, those are av available over here as well to be viewed within drill point. Okay. So again, let's just quickly summarize uh, the concept here is that we log in the drill point, we refresh the report. Once we refresh the report, we have the report at our disposal. From that point, we can click on any number within the report, whether it's actual or budget. So if I wanted to see you know, what the budget amount was, 
Here I can click on that budget and now it shows me all of the budget transactions. And I can even click on a budget entry and now I can see that this was the journal entry from where the budget, this budget was transferred over from a budget worksheet. So all of that's available here to us as well. Okay. So again, not only does it save a tremendous amount of time because you're not having to repeat this report process every single time that you want this type of report in Excel, but again, it also gives you a very user-friendly interface where you can run these reports and then if you have questions or if other members within the organization have questions about their reports, hopefully they can just drill into the information on their report to get any sort of details as, as, as it relates you know, to the information with, within their specific report. Okay. All right, let me pause here for just a second and we'll check in with Bob to see if we have any additional questions at this point. No additional questions at this point. All right, a couple things here too I want to point out before we actually jump over to the design. If you look at the bottom of the report, you can see I've got multiple tabs down here, right? So what you are what you're able to do within Drillpoint is that you don't have to have a se separate Excel file or ex an ex separate Excel document for each report that you want or each type of report. You can really have one workbook. Maybe that workbook is called uh, Board Packet. And so then within the Board Packet workbook, on each tab, you have a different type of report, right? So if I click over here to this other tab, you can see this is my balance sheet report that I ran and refreshed, okay? The, the tab we were just on is my income statement. Okay, so by doing that, it also then allows you to use standard Excel functionality to, to do charts and graphs, right? So what I did was I created this other tab here called Dashboard. Now when I go to the Dashboard tab, you can see it's pulling information from those other two reports, but it's doing that in real time and it's doing that on the fly. So every time I come into this workbook, and I run or refresh either my income statement or my balance sheet, guess what? My dashboard is going to automatically get updated to in real time, right? So again, think back to now if you're doing reporting like this, you, you have to do this every month over and over and over again. But no longer do you have to do that with DrillPoint, okay? So I've set this up in advance, so now Every time I refresh the reports, that information feeds into my dashboard here. So I can visually see where we stand with um, not only balance sheet information, but also budget information. Uh, you can see I have a revenue trend there as well, and also have a sources of revenue you know, that are showing where, you know, where things are coming from. You know, if I wanted to, I could even add another one here called you know, an expense analysis. So we could see, you know, a ratio or a level of spending of expenses, maybe at the program level, the grant level, or even by, you know, expense type. So again, just a visual way for you to be able to see this information very quickly. Okay. All right. So now let's go back to our uh, revenue and expense report, and let's go back to design mode. Okay. So now we're back at the the, the template the report design template. So let's talk about um, you as the designer creating these report templates for your organization. What's involved in that? Okay. There's two basic components that every report needs to have within DrillPoint. The first component is it needs an FRO. That stands for Financial Report Outline. So I'm, I've highlighted column A right there. So think about over in MIT, when you run reports, every report has what they refer to as a financial statement format. This is the equivalent to that over in DrillPoint. Okay? So that's what you're seeing in column A is the actual layout for this specific report. So let's take a look at how you go about creating these FROs. So at the top, I'm going to click on Report Maintenance. 
when I do that, it's going to bring me up a list of all of the layouts that I've created. And you can see it's by organization. So, and there also is no limitation as well with DrillPoint in terms of uh, what databases within your organization you can report off of. Any database, any MIT database that you have within your system, you can create reports for those. And those can actually live within the same document. So maybe one tab you have a report that points to one database. Then on another tab you have a, uh, maybe that is that same report layout, but that's pointing to a separate database or, or even a different database. Okay. So let's take a look at this layout that we're using for this report, which is the basic revenue and expense. So let's click edit. So when we click edit, this is the design window for your layout. So this is where you're going to come to create whatever layouts that you need within your report. Okay, and there's really no limitation to that. You can have, you know, whatever types of sections that you need on your report. This again is a is an income statement example, uh, but you also can do balance sheet reporting. Or with DrillPoint, you can combine those two. Okay, so in when you're over in MIT doing base reporting, you know, depending on the type of layout you're creating, right, you're restricted as to to what accounts you can map for, to that layout. Well, you don't have that restriction within DrillPoint. You can put balance sheet type accounts in one section of the report, and you can put revenue and expense type accounts you know, on that same report in a different section. Okay? So lots of flexibility. Now once you add kind of a layout, then your next step is to design or to define the layout for DrillPoint. So what that means is that I need to tell DrillPoint what grant revenue means to me for this specific report. Okay, so if I highlight the grant revenue section and click on the edit button, the only thing that I have to do here is basically make selections on this form to define what this section is going to be. So if we kind of work our way down, this top section here is the grouping that we've really already we've talked about. So for this example, for grant revenue, we're actually grouping it by the GL segment. But you can see if I do a drop down here, this is showing me all of the segments of my chart. So if I wanted to do something, as I mentioned, maybe I want to show the GL account first, and then show a dash, and then show the grant, I can do that type of thing. So there's really no limit there as well for the grouping. Then we get down to the filter section of the report. So this is where you're going to basically you're going to assign the specific accounts that go into that grant revenue section. Okay? Now, if you've worked at all in MIP with those financial statement formats, you know that when you create a category, the only option that you have to map or assign accounts to that section is really by the GL segment. Right? But look what we've done here. We've pulled in all of the segments of your chart of accounts. So you can actually combine segments and segment values to create specific category mappings. Let me give you an example. Right now, we said as long as the transaction has the GL account that falls within this range, then I want you to put it in the grant revenue section on my report. Well, what if we wanted to say, but you know what, I also want to restrict that down to a certain fund. Okay? easy. I just come to my fund segment, go to my fund filters. You can see it brings in a list of all of my funds for me automatically. I didn't have to preload that. It's just reading that automatically. I'm going to move that over. So now look what I've done. Now I've applied not only a GL account filter to this section, but I've also additionally applied a fund segment value filter. Okay. So I could do that either at the segment level if I wanted to create a user-defined field and filter that way, I, I can give you a quick example of that. Um, let's, let's say that you're a grant organization and so you have a segment called grant. And what you, what you want to do is you want to categorize your grants and put them into one of three categories. So let's say state grant, federal grant, and local grant. 
So what you can do there is rather than having to come over here to the segment field and come to my grants and look at a list of my grants and try to remember well, which ones of these are federal, which are state, which are local, I can use a user-defined field and put that on the grant record within MIT. And then, and then at, every time I add a new grant, as long as I put it in the proper category, which is you know, making that field selection on the grant segment, as long as I do that, then that grant will get reported and pulled into this specific section of the report. Okay, So that's kind of a secondary way that you could uh, do that. And then the third way is by the traditional MIP reporting groups. A lot of you may be familiar with those, and you might be using those now within MIP. If you are, then you know that, that the use for those currently is for your column grouping and filtering on reports. Well, what we've done over here in DrillPoint is we said, well, not only can you use them in column filters and so forth in reports, but we're going to also allow you to set those reporting groups up and use those as filters for a specific section or a specific row on your report as well. Okay, So those are your, the three different types. and, and Hopefully what you've seen there is, is that this is much more powerful, much more flexible than what's currently available in the base MIP reporting because of the way you can really group and filter information on your reports within a specific section. Okay, So that would be the exercise here to create your outlines. Okay, These outlines can be copied, so if you get one that's sort of your standard outline and then you want to kind of make different variations of that, they're easily copyable so that you don't have to create every one of those you know, from scratch. You can create your master one and then make, make a copy of that and modify that. Okay? So that's step one, which is your outline. And then the next thing is, is you're simply going to add whatever columns to the report that you want. Okay? And there's really no limit because, you know, well, Theoretically, your only limit would be whatever your Excel limitation is for the number of columns you know, that you can have on a report. But let's take a look at column D here that we've, we've added. Because columns B and C, again, are just pulling the account in the description. But when we get to column D, that's where we're going to start pulling in data. So let's click on our column editor button at the top. And you can see in order to define a column, there's three tabs of information. We have the definition, the date range, and then the, the column filters. So let's start with the definition. So on the definition tab, right, you're going to put the column title. And you can see what I've done here is, is that I've embedded a couple of keywords. So what that does is then every time I run the report, it's going to dynamically put the start date and the end date based on you know the effective date that I've given it. That way I don't have to hard code that each time. And then we're going to tell drill point what type of column is it. And you can see through the drop down here we have various different types of columns. This is an actual column but we can we can do encumbrances by themselves or we can combine them together. Or we can do a budget column these next two are related to the layout. There's that user-defined field again. Or is this an Excel column? <clears throat> okay. Now, once you tell it the type of column, then you need to specify whether you want net activity, beginning, or ending balance. Right. So if we're doing balance sheet reporting, maybe we want to have a beginning balance column, then a net activity column, and then an ending balance. So you could easily do that. And we've also recently added this feature called Dynamic Column. Dynamic Column is a really cool feature. What it does is it actually allows you to predefine a bunch of columns on the report. Right? Maybe you want to define one for each month with, of your fiscal year. But when you run the report, you don't want future fiscal periods to show up on the report because you know, you're not there yet. right? So you can actually set these columns up and make them dynamic. So you can either dynamically hide columns based on that, or you can have a column that's dynamic, either it's budget or actual based on that. 
So an example there might be, let's say you go ahead and put your 12 columns on the report. One is each month within the fiscal year. Okay, so let's say your fiscal year, for the sake of argument, is January to December. And let's say you're in July. You've just finished July. So you want to run the report. And you want January to July to, act, to show actual. But you want August to the end of the year to sh only show budget. That's what these dynamic column capabilities give you the ability to do. And if you'll notice here, if you're doing that, we're also pulling in all of your budget versions as well, so you can tell the report what budget version you want to use in that column. Okay, So that's the definition. Then we have the date range. This is where I was talking earlier about every column on the report can have its own time frame. Okay? And this is where you set that. So if I do a, a quick drop-down list here, you can see those top three options are, are relative periods based on my GL fiscal year. Okay, so we have month, quarter, and year. So in this example of this organization's database that we're using today, we're on a calendar fiscal year, which is January to December. So DrillPoint automatically knows that that's, that's the time frame I'm looking for. I'm looking for January to December, okay, because I've selected year. And then it says, well, what year does he want when he runs the report? See this relative period option? See how it's set to minus one? This is more of the flexibility so that you don't have to come into these columns every time you run the report and update the time frame. That needs to be dynamic. So by being able to change the effective date of the report, then that impacts the time frame for every column on your report. Okay, so that's the flexibility built in. So when I ran the report a few minutes ago, I gave it a date, an effective date, I believe of October 31, 2015. So what it did was that rather than putting the year 2015 in this column, it looked at the relative period option. It saw that it was set to minus one, and it put the prior year in this column based on that effective date. If I wanted this to be two years ago, I could simply set the column to a minus two, three years ago, and so on. <clears throat> so you get the point there. And then this other checkbox is whether or not you want this to be the entire period or if you just want it to be period to date based on the, the report effective date. In the last tab over here is your filters tab. So just like you can filter a row or a section of the report, you also can you also have those same filter capabilities for your columns. Okay? So again, if you wanted to put just specific grants in this column, you could come to your grant filter and pick that. And not only can you do you, can you pick them just like individually, but what we're doing here is we're allowing you to select ranges, right? So that should help you, too, for, for maintaining the report, because if you add new grants or whatever, as long as the new grant, if you're using a range, if it falls within that range, then it's going to automatically get picked up on the report the next time you go to run and refresh that report. Okay? Um, I know we have a question up there, Bob, but let, let me finish a couple things here, and then we'll take, take questions. This next column over, which is an actual column as well, the only difference between that column and the column we just looked at was if I go to the date range tab, this is set to zero relative period, right? So it's going to actually give me the current year based on the effective date of the report. Okay. Now there's two other um, date range types. There is an explicit where you can put in a start date and an end date. This would be more hard coding a date range. This is good for things like um, when you wanted to want to report maybe on a grant year versus um, anything that's based on your GL fiscal year. And then we have this custom. This is the one that I was describing earlier, where I said you could like say, okay, look at the report effective date, go back five years from that point and give me a five-year cumulative total. And then I'm going to divide that by five and come up with a five-year average. 
So that's what this custom type of, of time frame date range is used for. And then finally, this budget column here, once we set this to be a budget column, we also get this additional drop down which says budget version. So this is going to pull in a, a list of all of my budget versions. And I can select which version of the budget as well as what budget time frame am I looking at within this specific column. Okay, And then these other three columns that I didn't really talk about are nothing more than just Excel formulas. Okay. So that's really it. That's really the design component. Okay, just to review, the outline comes first and then the columns get added next. Okay. <clears throat> so with that, uh, Bob, let's go ahead and, and, and take um, other questions. So the question is, does drill point come with some FROs or will they all need to be created from scratch? And Robbie, I can take that and you 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 let me know if I've, I've answered it correctly. So the answer is no, there's no preset FROs that come with the product. However, with your training classes that you're getting from your partner, Abella, or us, and I know us speaking from, from fact, um, we offer as part of the baseline training, uh, part of that training includes connecting up to your database and helping you build one of the more heavily used FROs that you you may need in drill point as part of that training. And Robbie, I'll let you add to that answer. No, I mean that that's exactly right. And as I mentioned, the ability to be able to copy those uh, makes that process uh, fair, fairly easy as well. <clears throat> Other questions, Bob? Uh, that's the only question we have right now. Okay, so um, so let's see. So we've covered the report in terms of running and refreshing the report and the ability to be able to drill down. Um, and then we also looked at designing a report. So uh, at this point, we're to our, looks like we have about 10 minutes left in the hour. So um, I'm happy to open up the floor for any other questions. Um, if you wanted to just enter those in, in the question section, or if you would just uh, prefer to be able to ask that question, um, if you'll click on your hand raise there in your chat window, um, I'll be able to take you off mute, and then I'll, that, that way you can ask the question. So it looks like we do have a question here from, um, from Cheryl, I believe. Let's see. And Robbie, while you're doing that, um, there's another question. Can you access these reports either in or out of MIP? So in or out of MIP. So keep in mind that these reports are all built, done, and refreshed and worked on within Excel. You notice we've not gone, gone into MIP at all. So that is not a requirement for you to go into MIP to do any of this. This is strictly an integrated report writing tool, but it's all done within your copy of Excel. Do we have other questions? Um, if so, enter those in, or if you raise your hand, we'll be happy to um, take you off mute so and let we you... Have um, we have a question about training. So again, a lot of this is really going to be dependent upon your partner, but I can tell you that our uh, standard training, uh, it's called fast track training, is going to consist of about a four hour session, one on one with a trainer. You can bring another person to that training. It's done remotely via the web, and it consists of about two to two and a half hours worth of standard content on how to use drill point and then it's followed up with about an hour and a half's worth of connecting to your database and helping you build some of these FROs that you'll be using going forward in drill point. At the conclusion of that training it's a reasonable expectation if you understand MIP's reporting, uh, how you do reporting in MIP and you have a good handle on Excel it is reasonable for you to feel like you can walk away from that training and begin to build medium to medium complex level reporting after that training. 
And I would assume that both Abila and your partner would also offer something similar. All right, any other questions? Want to make sure we, we get everyone covered here before we, we end this afternoon. Um, so any questions online or, again, if you'd like to raise your hand, we'd be happy to take you um, off mute so you can ask those questions. We'll give you maybe about another 15 seconds or so, and uh, if not, um, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Bob and let him kind of wrap things up for the afternoon. So. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and conclude our overview today. Uh, if you do have questions beyond today, certainly there may be things that come to mind. You know, feel free again to reach out to your uh, business partner or to your Abella Cam or even to us. We'll be happy to to answer those for you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and and switch it back over to, um, wait, looks like we do have a question. Um, Marsh, hang on, let me see if I can get you off mute. Okay, Marsh, are you there? I am here. I <clears throat> couldn't figure out how to write a question, and then I finally found <laughs> the little box that was hidden. So here's my okay. question, is, and I've got two of them. One is that you showed you can select a, a range of GL accounts. But what if okay. you just happen to not have a numerically consistent range and you've got uh, like 400 to 410, but you also need to include 430? How do you, how can you do something like that? Sure, great question. So let, let's, let me jump back over here real quick into the FRO and let's use your example. So. <clears throat> Right here I have a, a range, right? So let's take your example. Let's say that you have this range, but then you skip down, and then you want to either include another range or just another, or even a different account. So you can do that. So you see how you can do range plus individual accounts. And then maybe you come down here, and you want to do yet another range. So that, that would be the way you could do it. So you could actually you know, kind of stack those on top of each other like that. So that, that's really not a restriction. Yeah, that sounds great, and that's exactly what I was looking for. I, for some reason, I missed that. My other question is, and very related to what you just showed, is within MIP, I can tell what accounts I haven't included. So um, in other words, eventually, I need to include all the revenue and expense accounts if I want a complete uh, profit loss statement. and if I don't, if if something's missing, then I don't. My P and L is going to be off, so I, I need to be able to solve that error. How can I tell if I've selected, if all the accounts have been put into my profit and loss statement? So that one's a little more trickier, and the reason it's a little more trickier is because we 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 have added flexibility in here for you to be able to do different groupings and so forth so unlike MIP where if when you're creating an outline if you use an account like you said that account goes away right it's no longer available to be used anywhere else on that on that report statement that's not the case here with drillpoint so you could actually use a GL account in one section of the report and use that same GL account in another section of the report and here's the reason that we, we do that is because back over here on this first tab, you can see what we're doing is we're actually allowing you to combine segments and segment values together, right? So let me give you a quick example. Let's say you have a salary expense account, right? And we'll just call that 5,000. Let's just say that's the number. Well, let's, set, let's suppose you want to put salary expenses for one specific grant in one section of the report. And then below that, somewhere down below that, you want to have another section that shows salary expenses, but maybe for a different grant or a different program. Well, if we take that account away, then you wouldn't be able to use that combination of that other grant and that GL account. Okay, So that's the reason why it's a little more trickier here. 
in, in drill point. So we don't really have a mechanism per se that says, okay, you've already used this GL account on the statement, therefore it, it can't be used again. So um, that, that's really the reasoning behind that. So you know, there is a little bit of due diligence there on your part, I guess, to make sure that you're, you are including all of the accounts on the report that you, that you need to put on there. One other, one other question. Can I save a hard copy, or in other words, a non-linked copy of this? Yes, you can. Because okay, go ahead. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's nothing more than just an Excel document, right? When you're finished. Now, if you do that, I will. Caution's probably not the right word, but if you do that, uh, then there is no drill down capability to the report itself. Okay, so if I it, let's say for example you run and refresh the report, then you save it. You email a copy of that to some other user. Um, if they don't have drill point in the ability to be able to refresh that report themselves, then there's no drill down capabilities. They they will be able to see the the top report as you've created it, but just you know no, no drill down capability. Thanks. You're welcome. We do have Great another question, question Robbie. Um, do we does DrillPoint have a robust help feature like MIP to reference and search for answers to questions? So at the top, I clicked help. Keep in mind, Abila did this help. I mean, they're the authors of this help, so this help looks exactly like what you're used to with within any other uh, drill point or any other MIP module. So you can see here's your search feature right here as well. See there's your contents, but there's your index and there's your search feature. So you can search for any type of thing. So yes, to answer that question. Any other questions? Uh, we have another question. Can you freeze the data in the report and still have all the functionality? Freeze the information in the report. <clears throat> so I'm assuming the question there might be, when you run the report, can you, can you save the report with that snapshot and then have the ability to still drill down into it? Um, if that's the if that's the question, then the answer to that is yes and no. <laughs> the answer is yes within that same session, right? So let's say, for example, let's say I refresh the report and I refresh this with an October date. Then I did file, save as, and I save that report, you know, and then I can click in it and drill down and all that stuff. But then let's say I close Excel down and then I go back into Excel, open up that report that I just refreshed and saved in its saved format with all the numbers on it, at that point you would not be able to drill back down into it unless you click report refresh again. That's the only time you have the ability to drill down into the information on the report. Okay, But keep in mind there's really no restrictions because when you refresh the report you could always reproduce that same report over and over again just by simply giving it that same effective date. Oh, all right. So, Bob, it looks like there are no other questions at this point, and, and we are straight up uh, three o'clock. So, I'm going to flip it back over to you for closing comments. Okay. So, everybody, thanks for attending. Again, you'll get a survey that'll pop up as you leave the the seminar today. Please, if you need follow-up information, notate that in your response in the survey. We'll make sure that your partner or your Abila Cam uh, has that uh, information so they can provide you what you're looking for. Um, we also have recorded today's demonstration, and we can make that available to, again, those who indicate on their survey that they would like a copy of today's presentation. And uh, with that, uh, I'll thank each and every one of you for taking the time to uh, sit in on the demonstration today and uh, look forward to talking to you in the future. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.